All right, Richard, it's time to go. Man, you ruined my zen. I'm in the perfect tranquility of my backyard and you're telling me we gotta go to LA? Horrible, but there's business to be done. We'll be hitting the Peterson tomorrow, unveiling a new car. Uh, we just found out about our winner. We're trying to get a hold of them because they're gonna meet me at the Beverly Hills Hotel. We're gonna have some fun. And uh, on top of that, it's LA. Maybe I do some shopping. Maybe I, hopefully I don't get robbed. actually let me into Beverly Hills. I'm in the city limits, 90210. I got our winner coming down. We're going to the Peterson. And on top of that, we're gonna have some fun. So uh, we're coming down uh, Sunset and uh, I spy with my eye a, uh, what I believe is to be about an 87, 88 turbo cab uh, Porsche, white. Um, and uh, the garage door was up, had a whole bunch of boxes and crap around it and somebody was moving some stuff around. So we're gonna go back and see if that somebody's still standing there and go to the gate and ask them if they'll sell it to us. They're gonna tell us to get that out, but we're gonna do it anyways. There. Oh okay, yeah, that's it. You can pull him right there. Excuse me. Hi there, how you doing? Unbelievable. Hello, is that a Porsche possibly for sale? Si, si vende the Porsche? You know how Spanish? No, es el vende del doctor. No, no sell the Porsche? No. Okay, I just saw it. No, vende, vende. No. Ah. <laughs> it's very cool. Was I right on the money or what? Yeah, that's a turbo actually. And a turbo, a turbo cab. Yeah. Wow. Good. That's a good spot. <laughs> Going to always be looking. Okay, so uh, let this guy pass, then we'll do it. Excuse me, boys. <laughs> security. Now security act like he's on the phone. He wants to know if we're filming. Well, we're filming. All right, he's so slow this walk. Look at that. Like what's going on? Now he's gonna land on the landing just to see what we're doing. Like I've never been surveilled before. Come on. So bottom line is uh, our winner is uh, uh, down here at the bar. Uh, we tried to get back. He told us he was going to be here uh, in about 30 minutes and he got here 30 minutes early. So uh, let's go down and uh, see what he has to say it and get him uh, good and liquored up and take him to the Peterson. Let's have some fun. What's up, man? Good to meet you. Kurt, how you doing, man? Good, man. Right on. Is this your lovely wife? Surly. Surly? Surly? Yeah. Surely without the H. Surely without the H. All right, Surly. Got it. Good. Right on. Well, congrats, man. Thanks. I'm sorry we were. He told me an hour and a half, and we, I don't really care. Yeah, you got here to get loaded. Early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on. We're very good. Everything's excellent. Glad you guys uh, got to come down, and uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I don't know exactly how everything's working yet, because it's kind of a, a production. But hanging out, having a time. You'll get to meet my lovely wife, uh, the millennial behind the camera is uh, Singe in there, and that's a buddy of mine, Don. Very good to meet you guys. We just had to go eat some pizza. Nice. I think right I have on. to grab a little snack from the concession stand or something, I don't know. No, eat whatever you want. And uh, I'll, I'll get you all set up on all the things being taken care yeah. of. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? So uh, we had a little uh, mini giveaway, if you will, and uh, the winner is uh, Kirk and his lovely wife, Surly. And uh, they came down to the Peterson, as promised, we're partying. We've already been at the Beverly Hills Hotel having a few cocktails. We'll get back to that later on tonight, but tonight, right now, we're at the vault. This is not what anybody gets to do, not regular people anyways. And I told them I'd take them on a personal tour and uh, we got some of our friends with us and we're gonna go down here and check it out, okay? Is the alarm gonna go off if I press this? Okay. Welcome to the vault, my man.
so what part of uh, Daniel, right, is uh, giving us the tour and telling us what's going on down here. So yeah, we're here in the vault. Uh, we start uh, periodically. So we start with uh, the horseless buggy and we kind of just move our way down um, to the cool stuff. So we got an old Rolls Royce here. We got the Mercer, which is the first uh, American sports car unofficially, right here. Are sale. you taking notes, Kurt? Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a 1915 Mercer. Uh, believe it or not, this car was able to go 100 miles per hour in 1915. Also, not this particular car, but the model um, came second in the Indy 500, the first Indy 500. That would have been Harry Hunt on. That's pretty cool. So that, that actually was pretty damn cool. 100 miles an hour in 1950. 15. Wow! So, look at the windshield, just, up, just cover your face right there, you know. That would have been a hell of a ride on brakes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I have a brake. <laughs> it's a crank start, you know. And this is probably one of the only ones in the world that's unrestored. So there are a lot of a lot of them out there, but uh, this Can is I unrestored. This? <laughs> it's a little priceless. I would love to buy a car here, and I've got a few stories about some cars here. Uh, most namely, uh, um, Magnus Walker's car, uh, which is very popular. They even made a tennis shoe out of it that I actually have. From my famous 277. The famous 277. I was never able to grow a beard that sexy and cool. But uh, Magnus did help me in his house one time. Super, super uh, polite guy, grateful guy for what he is, is doing for this industry and the Porsche is just amazing. Uh, super cool cat. Uh, I wish that I could live in his like domain and just play with Porsches all day, but I play with everything. Speaking of, you can check out his-, his uh, What? His Are y'all paying attention here? Check this out. This is Magnus Walker's personal collection. Uh -huh. Just a little bitty piece of it, because I know what he has back at the house. And this is wicked cool. Look at this. So, if you know anything about Porsches and Porsche collectors and what have you, Magnus is a big fish uh, in, a, in a little pond. He's got a lot of really cool stuff with a lot of history. So what I really like about this stuff is he drives it, he beats it up, he just refurbs it, does whatever, builds on it, adds to it, subtracts from it. Uh, he's not afraid to mess with it. That is one good looking dude. Oh, that was me. <laughs> um, anyways, just absolutely amazing. Now, the 277 out there, he actually collabed with uh, Nike and made these shoes. I have a pair. Uh, almost unobtainium by now, because they sold out like crazy. Uh, so pretty cool. The late 12? No, that's an uh, eight. That's an that's F12. That's an F12, right? Yeah, I had a black, black F12. And then the KVH. I mean, it's, it's, this, this car over yeah. here, Alpine did Le Mans. I mean, this car right here costs, I hate to say, without going into it, this car costs more than any of his cars in there. Wow. This one right here, that's impressive. Okay. Thank Christmas yeah. birthday, any <laughs> All of my Christmas <laughs> birthdays for the remainder of my life. Yes. This yeah. is what I want. This is a uh, 300 SL Goldwing. And uh, the only thing that I would do differently uh, is I want the uh, Rutledge knockoffs. Uh, and uh, this color scheme does not bother me. There's some other particular color schemes that would be pretty cool. But this, look at that luggage back there, boo. You could pack your makeup in it and we could go. <laughs> I mean, and that's about it. Yeah, but if you're traveling this, you got enough money that you don't care what's there when you get, you just buy what you want when you get there. Who's got the best one in the world? Uh, yeah, Nick, uh, Zach. Yeah, did you see it last year? Yeah, I did. I did see Zach's last year, and uh, I'm trying to talk him out of it, but he knows what it's worth. Yeah, That's my problem. So I hate it when they know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are Super Americas. Uh, and even a regular uh, yeah, this is Barchetta cool. are through the roof. Is this a Super America is a Barchetta. Whatever. Whatever it is, I turned down one of these back in the day because I didn't think it was that sexy for like 200. Oh, wow. And I'm like, what? Now they've just they've gone yeah, through the crazy control now. Use this one. Or we used to use this one for events and offsite events. We used to take for rallies and this and that. Then, of course, with the market, we saw what they're recently going for and we're kind of retiring it for now. Gold DeLorean? It's a DeLorean. But it's gold, baby, gold. I love gold. I love gold. <laughs> so this was used for a, uh, American Express. Uh, 
Oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Oh, you were, you were able to buy this from the catalog. I remember this. Uh, it was, was it the Neiman Marcus catalog? With the, with the, it was. That's yeah. right. It was in the Neiman Marcus catalog, 1987. I was graduating high school, dating myself. And uh, if you if you got the gold card, you could get the gold card to go with it. And uh, what have you? This is called the low res car. So this has been used in a lot of music videos, like Kendrick Lamar. But it essentially has a golf cart engine in it. So it's um, not a car. It drives. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll move. Okay, um, I'm building one of these next week. I have a golf cart at the shop. <laughs> but it's essentially, um, if you get a, a Kubotosh and you pixelize it and um, low res it, this is what it looks like. Um, and that, that was the inspiration for the, the build. So there's a couple of cars like this that a very good friend of mine, Jay Nordstrom, used to own that had dual motors in the back. Okay. And they, they were somehow synced up. And I mean, that was the raddest car in the world. And it took me 10 minutes to get in it and 20 to get out. Wow. It was so tight, but I had to drive. Now we're getting into the Amber cars, which is uh, America's most beautiful roadsters. Absolutely. So all of these have won at uh, one point. Um, so yeah, all customs. I was actually the caretaker of the uh, uh, King T. Okay. Um, uh, that Gene Winfield built, uh, yep. won the 1964 AMBR mm -hmm. uh, for about six years. I just sold it. Okay. Um, kind of sad about selling it. I was kind yeah. of upset, but you know. We're right here. This is the first Amber winner ever. Ever? Yeah, so this is the first Amber winner. So and that would have been 62 or 61. 62. Around there, yeah, one of those years. I want to say 62. Mm -hmm. Wow! Uh, I could literally go broke in here, dear. And I could make you broke, too. <laughs> now, see, this is what I'm really starting to get into, too, is real low riders from the day with pedigree. I think this is a market that... Well, this one right here is probably the most popular low rider in the world. This is actually a historic vehicle by Haggerty. It was presented in front of the Capitol in D.C. Jay Leno's driven it. It's been on Leno's show. Um, it was a father and son project, um, multiple layers done. It will do one layer, then put a clear on to the multiple, another layer. Um, but yeah, this was in a um, famous TV show uh, in the 60s. So. That's really cool. Yeah. Is that a removable top? Uh, it's not removable, no. Um, but you can't really see but the whole the engine bay is everything's all etched. I think it is. This is convertible back here. Yeah. This is a removable top and it's from a, a 60s T-Bird okay. on an Impala. I guarantee you, I know what I'm looking at there. <laughs> that is rad. Oh my, is this Elvis Presley's like... Uh, it's, it's a Pope. It's a Pope. I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Elvis Presley was cool, but he wasn't a Pope. <laughs> Didn't you almost buy the Pope? I did Mobile? almost buy the Pope's Escort. Uh, it actually was on a big sale in uh, Vegas. And uh, I was really chasing it, and everybody thought it would just be cool to own it. My deal was I was after it because when you become the Pope or you become uh, whatever it is before, you give up all your worldly belongings. Well, he did that way early, and somehow his Ford Escort ended up at an auction in Las Vegas for sale and still had um, a medallion on his dash and an actual rosary in the glove box. And so I was bidding like crazy and uh, it went to a big collection in Houston uh, and they were thinking the same thing as me. You, you, you want the rosary. If there's anything that I've actually ever wanted to have because it was my favorite cartoon as a kid is a real Mach 5. And this is one of the best creations of this I've ever seen. Oh yeah. Because uh, most of them, they're, they're kit cars based on a Corvette. They're real crappy and shitty and you don't want it. Mm -hmm. This is rad. Did somebody build this by hand? Yes. So this was... Um... I believe uh, Gotham Garage did this one. Oh, really? So, yeah. All right. So this is one of their creations. Well, credit for them. Yeah. No Gotham Garage. This is Magnum PI's Magnum PI 308 Ferrari. Correct. The this, Magnum. This is it. Honey? That's why it doesn't have the Honey, uh, you want to come over here and, like sit where <laughs> Magnum did and be like, hey, what's up? What's <laughs> that? Smells like Celic. <laughs> so do you know what I actually wanted to do? Sure. Um, I, I challenged my friends to this, and you know, some of them have uh, the ability to do this with me. I, this was five or six years ago when these 308s were fairly cheaper, probably half of what they are now. I said, we all have to buy our own 308s. You cannot, 
you, you have to shave and wear a mustache. You have to wear Tom Selleck gear, the, the Hawaiian shirt and the shorts. Short shorts too. Yeah. And, uh, and in my parking lot at Gas Monkey, where I do all the donuts, mm -hmm. I wanted to have six of us have bumper cars. Oh. <laughs> and the only, rule, the only rule was you couldn't hit the back because that's where the motor's at, right? Yep, yep. And the last car surviving gets all the cars and can sell all the parts or do whatever he wants to will. Okay. And Don was in, and a few of my other buddies were in, but we didn't quite get six, and it takes six to make the mathematical equation work. Because why? Because it's Selleck. And, okay. This is the round door rolls. Look at the shape that they found it in. So yeah, it was in a junkyard in New Jersey, and that's how it, it was found. You know, for a junkyard in New Jersey, that still looks pretty good. Yeah. So I saw this car at a concourse mm -hmm. um, when I was first starting Gas Monkey. And I didn't have a lot of money, but I was trying. I was trying to do something that we're doing with Gas Monkey. And uh, one of the Peterson representatives were there, and it was somebody high up. I don't remember their name, but they were high enough up that they were in control of this car. And it looked just like this. And I walked up, and I was like looking at it and talking about it. And uh, you know I actually, I'll actually do a little favor for I you. actually got to sit in it. And uh, I said, can this car be bought? And you know what they said? They said, probably for the right price. I mean, this is going back 20 something years. Yeah. So Peterson could use money. I wanted the car. I didn't really have the money. And I said, well, how much is it? And they said to me, I don't know what would be an offer. And I said, I'll give a million dollars for it right now. Now, I didn't have $10, but I was gonna find a million. Sure. And you know what they told me? They said yes, and we shook on it. And, wow. uh, and uh, then it, the, the thing was over. Well, maybe not back then. You know, now it's been yeah. publicized so much and everything. And maybe not back then, but now, you know, it got over and I called back the next day and uh, called up here and they were like, yeah, you know, we, we really can't sell it for that. So I went to two that I was gonna have to borrow, beg, or steal. Mm -hmm. And they came back and said no. So, yeah, I'm into three now. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually fucking have it. You're gonna have to, I actually <laughs> have it. I'll, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go that way with it. And, you know, wow. And if you want to walk out of the room and come back, I'll be at four. <laughs> it's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've only been down here in the vault, like, this will be my third time, and it's always different, it's always cool to see what's going on. Uh, I'm glad that Kirk and his wife got to come out and uh, have a good time. Did you, are you learning something? You oh, digging yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Are you sure? Yes, yeah. All right. Well, we got to go up and see the unveiling of the cars, and then we're going to go see the Andy Warhol exhibit and a couple other things that are going on here. But uh, let's go. What do you think? Wow! I mean, we, we know what it looks like, but I'm seeing so many like subtle little small changes and just little tweaks. Like, I mean, this is a full on custom car. You're saying all the right things. It is very familiar. We've respected the original 67 Fastback, but we've made a very fresh contemporary take on that car. It, it really is. It's just kind of pushed here and slim there. And, and, what, and, it's, and it's all electric, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's four wheel. It's independent all wheel drive. So we've got torque vectoring technology. Um, super powerful. 1,520 newton meters of torque. Um, 530 plus horsepower. Nautilus. Can I open it? Yeah, of course. So we've got these flush door handles. NFC technology. And um, can I sit inside? I'm afraid to. It's Go white. On. Do it. Do it. I'm a very dirty guy. Holy cow. Okay, now that's just freaky because the whole floorboard's flat. You know, you're used to being compartmentalized. So what we wanted to do with the car is it still talks to the original exterior of the car. We've got that iconic over the top of the dash. There's nice sweeps, but it's super minimalist inside. Really clean, visually clean and stripped back and minimalist. Yeah, you're right with the flat floor. No, no center console going through there. And uh, we've got HVAC slot going through. So again, very clean, no round I face. I can't even see right? the Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it works really, really effectively. Steering wheel is kind of familiar with the original Fastback, but it's now, it's got all the modern fingertip controls on it. But it's very, again, very, very minimalist. All of your controls are basically on this central screen here. The only real physical buttons are park, reverse, neutral drive down here. How got, long is, is it before we can just say, 
Reverse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's scarily close. I know. I guess you got to really make sure you know what you're doing. So you got to push the button. Yeah. So that's cool, though. I mean, you know, push button uh, technology was out back when it was still cables, you know, in the 60s. But, you know, now you just poop and you're gone. This is a fully connected driving experience as well. You, you kind of have to recalibrate your brain. You're getting in. Your brain is telling you it's an old school 67, but you get in it and it's a 21st century driving experience. Even where your hand is now, you've got wireless chargers, so you can put two phones onto there. Um, everything is controlled through that central screen. You can do your subtle little adjustments here, or fingertip controls. So you've got your adaptive cruise and, and lane assist and so on. It's just so clean. <laughs> I love the fact that the, there's no back seat. You got so, a nice package tray back there. So. I love this. You still It's a muscle car. You still get this sense of occasion when you open the hood on this car. Look at the way the bumpers are just pushed in. So, nowhere to put your luggage. This is powertrain. So you've got twin inverters, you've got twin wheel motors, reduction gearbox set Siamese together here. And, and that's it. All carbon fiber panels, carbon fiber. Now the whole car is carbon fiber though. This body shell is steel. Okay. Everything else is carbon. Everything so, attached to it. So this is carbon fenders and so on. So typically, with your old school 67, this is a 22 kilo hood. This is an eight kilo carbon fiber hood. We're in America, man. You got to talk uh, American. What's that? 15 pounds. Or I don't know. Like that? See, I didn't do enough <laughs> drugs when I was a kid to learn the metric system. This is light. This is very, very light compared to an original. And, and, That's and I'm really going to cool. On that. What winds me up incredibly on an original car is you get this nasty closing panel. You never used to line up properly that holds the headlamp unit into place. We've now chased all of this through. It's all new surface, new tooling, carbon fiber, but we've made it super clean. So no shut lines and minimize the, the panel count over the whole car, but we've chased all of these features. So you've got these lovely sharp lines now, really crisp lines that run right the way through. Yeah, and these are just a little bit more torque. Just a just tiny bit, just a little out. bit more personality. Yeah. Even the subtle things. What is this under here? It feels like velvet. <laughs> it feels so smooth. We don't do velvet. I don't know. 18 inch wheels, seems that you're close to them. And we've got, these are, these are the wheels that we're running all of our development cars on, but we've got three new wheel designs in progress at the moment. And those are big brakes, what are those, 16s? They're big brakes, they're very big. Yeah, the cars, you know, you need stopping power with this car. Um, so oh, when you're running and you get in, in theory, we can just smoke all four tires? That is so rad. I almost would just show up with a, a beat down version that doesn't look this perfect at a, at a regular car meet and just whoop, light it up. Everybody's like, what the hell just happened? Well, what we're doing as well, since you mentioned that, we've, we've created four different themes for the car. Uh, so you can... You can have the car like a like a dark kind of Batman kind of car, or you can have it more like this, more like a lifestyle, more light and open. Well, um, I love the fact, you know, one of the things that I think about a lot of custom hot rodders is they'll get rid of the drip rail. And it looks cool, but it's not functional, especially if it is raining. So I love the fact that y'all left those on the car. I think this is it's a defining feature of the car. We don't want to take too much away from it. What it, we have done is we've cleaned all this up because we don't need louvers and vents on this. The louvers and vents that were here, you know, in 65 some of them worked, maybe later 66, they got a little bit of air to the inside, but uh, 67 and so on, we're just stuck on there, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's a, again, part of our design language. It just keeps the car nice and clean. Another thing, as we're in this area, is I want, guys, could somebody pop the charger point, please? Um, on the original car, this didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. It looked cool, but it didn't do it a thing. It did on the R-Race cars, but that's it. But for us, we like to make things have a function. So now you've got your charger point here. Okay, so and actually... like everything English, you put it on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the passenger side. But it's turning it into a, into a functional part of the car now, rather than just a, a dummy. Now you're, you're shaving and you're pushing everything in and you're enhancing, but you got some, some really big rear view mirrors. They're the, so, they're the What's the purpose? So, because the car is fully homologated, European small series, we can't put the little bullet mirrors on this car because it has to comply with all crash tests okay. with brake back and all sorts. These are the smallest mirrors we could possibly get away with to comply with the legislation. So for US, it's, um, it's replica law, but for European small series, you have to, we have to crash a car, we have to go through all sorts of tests. Absolutely. And one of them is creating a mirror that complies with the minimum radii and all sorts of crash tests. Now things. for the cars that come into the US, could this be the small bullets if we wanted, or no? It has to stay like this. 
Only if somebody did it afterwards themselves. I understand, I understand. We have to, we have to sell the car that complies with the legislation. What about the trunk? Is it a trunk? It's a standard trunk, yeah. Okay, super it's cool. It's a standard trunk. We, since we're around here, engineered jewelry, I call the lamps. They're all LED, Ooh. high intensity LED. So it still keeps the same character as the original car, but especially when they're illuminated, they look beautiful. No, that is really wicked sexy. And, you know, it's hard for me to reimagine, if you will, not having uh, exhaust back here, you know, pipes or exhaust. Um, but what's really kind of messing with my mind is I saw where you charge it, and obviously we're not putting gas in it, so what did we do that's with this? Boot, that's the boot release. You just press that and that's You the just press release. it, okay. Yeah. <laughs> While we're here, in, in fact, this is still a muscle car, so check this out. When you're following the car, look what you see. Holy cow! So tubular steel, rear subframe, you can see the all new suspension, we've got AP racing brakes, R53 dampers, um, twin wishbones at the rear. That is really... You know, this, this is not a hermetically sealed plastic EV. You know, this is still a muscle car. Exactly, and that's a cool way to do it because, you know, if I pull up to the light and I'm goofing around and, you know, I'm at a car event or following some people and I see that, I'm gonna be like, I, I don't know that. what's going on there. I, I love that. It, it's mechanical, it's engineered, you know, it's a muscle car when, you, when you're following this car. That is very cool. That's something that I didn't notice hmm. uh, in the materials that you sent me, but that, really looks like it's just a hopped up muscle car. And the way you did the little roll bar back here is really pretty cool. Yeah, we need to do um, we need to do something again to conform with legislation. If you put your luggage in the back there and you have to hit the brakes really hard. Can't slide. You don't want it coming into the front with you. So well, we you've got the luggage tie downs. Yeah, you've got I, straps that you can put across there as well. I could see uh, I could see custom, you know, name brand luggage that's built to fit back there. We're working you know, on that. That would be super cool. We're working on that. So you can you can order bespoke luggage basically for your car. I mean, this really is the perfect rendition of a 67 in full 2023 electric done plug it in and go that's a real compliment what are we getting in what are we getting on uh, hours i guess it's not miles now so it's um in terms of range it's a 200 mile range 200 mile range yeah i've just spotted something else that we didn't mention one of my favorite things nobody in the world except us can say hand built in london <laughs> I didn't know they built anything in London. <laughs> we we <laughs> build 67s. In London, in London proper. Yeah. That is pretty it's a awesome. Nice, it's a really unique statement, and we're really proud of that. That is cool. Well, man, I got to tell you, this is unbelievable. I know you got another one over there in a different color, and I can't wait to see that one too, but man, you guys killed it. So how long have you been on the project? Um, I've been there nearly three years now, but uh, our CEO set the company up in 2016, so he's he's been running a company now for yeah, nearly six but years. But you're chief... Uh, creative officer so you're like the smart guy um i like to think so <laughs> <laughs> we're all smart guys the, the team are very smart we we're basically the team at charge are from formula one i'm from supercar background with military vehicles high-end luxury vehicles we're like a melting pot of just car nuts really you know yes sir i mean that's it's it's awesome i mean if somebody would have came to me and told me that, that, that you know, any company was going to do this and reimagine it this way, I'd have been like, I don't know, man. You know, I mean, it's a great idea. I love it, but what's going to happen? Y'all went way far and above. I mean, everything about it, the way it sits, the way it's just smoothed and pushed in. I would have done almost the exact same mods on, a, on, a, on an actual 67, you know, uh, fire beating dragon, but, you know, you guys nailed it. Thank you, thank you very much. The main thing that we're finding, the message that we really want to get across to people is it's not a resto mod. And when people understand that we haven't dragged we haven't dragged the car out of a barn and thrown the engine away and then put an electric motor in it, when they understand it was conceived and born as an electric car from the ground up, they really get it. They really understand that. And I have a line that I always like to use, is no internal combustion engine was harmed in the making of this car. And, then pe <laughs> and people are, oh, I see what you mean. And they, and they get it then. Super cool, Mark. So Thank you me. created an awesome vehicle. Um, how do I get one? I mean, I'm kind of, I'm somebody. We have our head of global sales here this evening. Let's so go see he that can take some money off you. Yeah. Uh, we're going in the back way to the Andy Warhol exhibit, which uh, is an exhibit of all the cars that were featured in some of his paintings. This was actually the um, last commission that was by uh, Mercedes or Andy Warhol for the 100th um, anniversary of Mercedes. Really? So, so he was commissioned to do 100 paintings 
he only was able to do um, about 40 until he died. So this is his last project. Sterling Moss to the yes. Formula One Grand Prix, 1954. Yeah, that's the, that would be, if that ever got sold, that would be a record sell price in the world. More this car probably happens. brings <clears throat> uh, 250 to 500 million. Million? Yeah. Right. Million? Yeah. <laughs> that's on that, that and, and who knows what the bidders, that yeah, is. Don't touch. <laughs> what is Cat, can we have it, please? <laughs> Kitty cat, I need this for my birthday. <laughs> Are these real coins in here? Holy cow! My senior steel, the, the cool thing about it, check out those fast seats. Like, you know, like, still gotta have some styling to it. So it's super cool to get in, right? I can't believe it's been like Holy cow! In, am I wrong on the estimate? At a museum, we don't we tend to not put uh, numbers on anything, I, I so it, 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 it's a but the other SLR went close to wow. 200 or 130 to one. I didn't know if I was going to yawn or freak out. So I think you just covered up a yawn like with a wow. And this turned out so they had a credit 250 million dollars. That is. Have you ever seen anything like this? I've seen something worth that much money. I mean, but I've never seen anything like that. Center steer, one seat only. I mean, and this is 1954. Do you know what a freaking just craziness this was in 1954? Look at this air duct. Look at this air duct, uh, Don. This, I didn't see the 30 um, Formula One car. Dude, that's a, that's a hundred million. Oh my God. So this, yeah, this is stri strictly straight from Mercedes uh, in uh, Berlin, I believe, or um, Skirgard, but. Uh, hidden, these got hidden during the war. World War II. Yeah. So this, wow. Yeah, all to be in one room. Yeah, so with the Warhol. So all the the art. With the same. All Are the, the Warhols art, original? All original. That came directly from Mercedes um, um, collection. Can They're, they be bought? You have to c contact uh, Mercedes uh, collection. Hey Mercedes, give me a holler. I'm Gas Monkey. <laughs> What's up? Woo! So it was a great night here at the uh, Peterson Automobile Museum. We got to see the uh, redesigned 67, and uh, we got to go down into the vault and have some fun, right? Oh, yeah. All right. All this because he bought a t-shirt or something. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Get you some of that. Pay attention. GasMonkeyGarage.com. We're always doing some fun shit, and you want to be part of it. Right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to go get loaded at the hotel. <laughs>